What's going on guys? Welcome back. Hope you are doing well as always. In this module, we're gonna be talking about something called functions, an essential part of any computer program, whether it's an algorithm or an app or a website, doesn't matter, functions are used everywhere all the time. So we're gonna start this module off by getting into a definition of what functions are. We're gonna take a look at some real life examples to help illustrate the concept here, and then we're gonna get straight into the code. So. Really quickly, let's just take a look at this definition. A function is a self-contained block of code that performs a specific task. So you can think of it like a little mini program within your larger program, okay? And it's reusable and it makes our code easier to maintain, read, and write. So we're gonna get into some examples of how that works once we jump into the code. Next up, I want us to talk about some real life examples of what functions might look like. So example one. Let's think of a recipe. So think of a function as a recipe. Just like a recipe tells you how to prepare a specific dish, a function provides a set of instructions to perform a particular task. The recipe can be reused to make the dish multiple times the same way the function can be called repeatedly to perform that task. Another example would be like a mathematical function. So in mathematics, a function takes in an input and produces some output, right? based on a set of rules. Similarly, a programming function takes in some input values and performs some operations on them and returns an output. So for example, the mathematical function f of x equals 2x in, uh, will just double any number x that you provide it with. So if you give the number uh, x is three to the function, it will return six, right? If you give it four, it will return eight. Whatever input you give it, it is just doubling that number. It is performing some operation on the input value that you give it and spitting a value back out um, with the result of what you want it to do. So that's just two real life examples of what functions might look like. Now that we've gone through that, guys, let's go ahead and hop into the code and start writing some functions of our own to get a better understanding of this concept here. So with Xcode opened up, guys, let's go ahead and create a new playground for our functions. So same as always, just go ahead and create a new file, search for blank playground, and we're gonna call this guy functions. So spell that wrong. Okay, so let's just go ahead and let me start off by copy and pasting our notes in here. You guys should do the same. So this is module eight functions. They are self-contained chunks of code that perform a specific task and we are gonna have our declaration of a function here. So let's go over how to write a function really quick. So we're gonna start out with creating or writing the word func and that indicates to our compiler that we are about to create a function. So next up, we name the function. So let's write a function that just says hello to somebody. So we're gonna call it greet, and then what you're gonna do is put two parentheses there and open up some curly brackets. So whatever happens inside of these curly brackets or this block is what the function is going to do. So these are the instructions that we're gonna give it, and then when we execute the function, it's going to perform that task. So let's just go ahead and say print hello world. Okay. So this is a super simple function, it's called greet, and it's just gonna print hello world. And we've written out the function now, so we're, we know what the function is gonna do, but in order for it to actually execute, we have to do something known as call the function. So back to that recipe example, right? The recipe contains a list of instructions that will help us make a dish. But in order for us to actually make that dish, we have to execute those instructions, right? So this is what that looks like in a computer program. We just go somewhere below that function definition and say greet. And you'll notice it comes up in your autocomplete window. You can just hit enter. And if we run our code, guys, this is simply going to print hello world. So some of you might be like, well, hey man, why didn't you just say print hello world like outside of that, right? And the reason for that is because what if I wanted to you know, execute this multiple times and print hello world like 50 times, right? Then if I wanna do that, I can just access this greet function and it will do that every time for me. So I could say greet, 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 and I don't have to type this line out every single time. And this is a super basic example, right? Functions can get really complicated, like in a trading algorithm or something like that, where there's a lot of logic happening and a lot of different instructions being performed and you don't wanna to have to write that out every time you wanna perform that task, right? So functions give us a way of making things reusable inside of our code. So if I print this, it's obviously gonna print hello world five times, right? 
And, you know, another thing you could do is wrap that inside of a loop if you wanted to, but that's just a super basic example of a function. So here we call the function and let me just add that in there. And I want us to get another example here, guys, where we supply the function with an input parameter. So let's make another mark input param. And let's go back to that example of like that mathematical function we talked about where it was like f of x equals 2x, right? That's just a function that's going to double a number that we give it where x is some number that we supply to our function. So here's what that's going to look like. We're going to say func double value and we're going to pass in an input parameter here and it's going to be an integer. And then we can just say print x times 2. And let's go ahead and look like what it mean to look take a look at what it looks like to call or execute this function. So we are going to now say double value and you guys are going to notice that it asks us for an integer now. So whatever integer we supply it with, let's say we give it 5 and now we run our code, you guys might be able to guess that this is going to give us back 10. So why is that? So we specified an input parameter here, different than this function where there are no input parameters, right? It's just a blank set of parentheses. You place the input parameters inside of these parentheses here. This is what we're going to call the input parameter. Then we put a colon after it and we have to specify the type of data that it's going to be so that when we call that function, it knows what it needs to what it's allowed to accept. In this case, we're giving it five. If I try to give it like hello, right and tried to run that i'm going to get an error and it says cannot convert value of type string to expected argument type int so we have to specify the name of the parameter that we want and the data type that it's going to be so in this case we said five so this is important to understand guys whatever we pass in is treated as this variable x here so in this case it's five and it multiplies that times two so x is just our parameter name it's unknown until we actually call the function and supply it with a value so you know i could then go here and say double value seven double value 12 and run my code and every time I execute this function, it's just going to double that value for me. So we can see how this is going to start to help us out a lot when we're writing computer programs, right? We can write these reusable blocks of code that help us perform tasks. And right now these are really simple tasks, but like I said before, these tasks can become very complicated and functions are going to help keep our code super clean, reusable, easy to write, easy to read, all of that stuff, easy to maintain. Good programmers write a lot of functions, okay? Um, next up, guys, I want us to talk about what it looks like for a function to actually return a value or spit something back out. So right now, it's important to note that these functions are doing things, but they're not actually returning anything or giving us back a value, right? So with that mathematical function, like right now, we're just printing out x times 2. But functions can actually give us back a value. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So mark return a value we're going to say func and we could say like you know um triple value x int and we're going to type an arrow like that so it's just a dash and a caret and we want this to give us back an integer so here we can say return x times three and now let's go ahead and call our function and see what happens. So we can say triple value nine and run that. So you guys notice it doesn't print anything to our console, but it does give us a return value of 27. So this function is actually giving us back a value. So that means we could like store it in a constant. So we could say let result equal triple value um, of nine and then we could print out our result like that and we get back 27. so um there are a lot of situations in which you want functions to spit something back out for you right um and then there are some times where you don't need it to do anything you just need it to execute some sort of task and in the example of the recipe like obviously we want the function to that kind of function to give us back a meal right but imagine you wrote a function to 
for an exercise routine. That's just performing tasks. It's not actually giving you back anything, right? It's just doing exercise. Whereas the recipe is performing a set of tasks and giving you a meal out of it, right? So there is a difference between functions that return things and don't. The things that don't are just doing stuff. The things that return stuff, they also you know, perform a set of tasks or perform a set of instructions, but they ultimately give us back a value. That's very important to understand. So I wanna just break down what's happening here a little bit more before we move on to another example. So when we want a function to return a value, we use this arrow notation and specify the type of value that we want it to return. And then we use this return keyword here to ultimately accomplish that task. So if we don't have that, and like, let's imagine we just said print x times three, we're gonna get an error, okay? It says, cannot convert return of expression type empty, which is what those parentheses mean to type int. So basically it's saying that, hey, you told me this function needs to return something and you're not doing that anywhere. So uh, we can't use that print command. We could say return x times three. And you guys could also print x times three in that function if you wanted to. Functions can be as many lines as you want them to be, but ultimately we do have to return something here. So let's go ahead and write another example of a function that returns a value, guys. So let's write a function to see if we can add two numbers together. So I'm gonna write a func, and we'll call it add numbers. And imagine you want this function to add any two numbers that you give it. Well, we're gonna need two input parameters, and then we're just gonna add them together and return that value. So let's say we want x, which is an integer, and y, which is also an integer. And we want this to return a value, so it's gonna give us back an integer as well. And we could say, let sum equal x plus y and return our sum. And now we're gonna have a function to help us add any two numbers together. So we could just say add numbers to, and you guys can just tab over um, once you enter the first input parameter and it'll go to that spot and it's asking us for another integer and say five. And let's run that. And you guys will notice it won't print anything, but it is just gonna give us back seven, okay? So that's pretty cool. Let's see if we can write another function to do something like help us calculate someone's age, right? So let's say func get age. And let's think about what we need to figure out someone's age, okay? We need to know their birth year. And then we can look at the current year and subtract their birth year from that, and that'll give us back their age. We did a similar example to this earlier in the course, we're just using a function to, to, to do this now to make this reusable. So we need to pass in our birth year, which is an integer, and it's gonna give us back an integer as well. So let's go ahead and say, let current year equal 2023. Let uh, age equal birth year minus current year, or sorry, it's gonna be current year minus birth year. And then we can return age. So now that we have a function that will get us back the user's age, let's go ahead and see if we can write another function that's just gonna print it out to the user. So we'll write a function that's called display age, and it's not gonna return anything, we just want to execute a print statement here. So we wanna get the user's age and then display that back to them. So we'll say let age, and this is the concept I wanna illustrate here, guys, is we can call functions within other functions. So I can use this get age guy that I just uh, created as sort of like a helper function here, right? And then it's gonna store that value that it gets it gives me back in this age property. And now I'll be able to use some string interpolation to display that age back to the user. So I could say print you are age years old. And if I run this, um, we haven't called this yet, so it's not gonna do anything. Um, so let's make sure we do that. Let's say display age. And that will print out, you are 32 years old. So now let's make it so that we could make this function get us back the age of any user with any birth year, right? Right now it's only displaying the age of someone who's gonna be born in 1991. Let's imagine we want to set it up like this to where we can pass in the birth year of the person at any time and then have it display their age back to us. So what we can do is actually just have an input parameter for birth year here as well. 
which is an int. And then we can replace this 1991 guy with our birth year. And now you're going to notice this gives us an error. We have to pass in our birth year here. And I could say like 2005 display age uh, 1999, stuff like that, right? Now let's run this and let's see what happens. And let's do a quick breakdown of how that works. So you see we are 18 and we are 24 down here. So this is a really cool concept here, guys, where like I said, we're sort of, we're, we're using functions within functions. Right, we're using this get age guy as like a helper function to help us figure out the user's age and then ultimately display it back to them. So how did we do that? Well, we, we wrote this function. I think this is pretty straightforward by now. We pass in a birth year, we compute their age, and we return it. Now, to display the age, well, if we want to make this dynamic, right, instead of just passing like hard coding like 1991 or 2005, we want to make it so that anytime we call this function, we can pass in a birth year and it'll figure out the person's age for us, right? So we have an input parameter here as well, and we pass that along to our function uh, get age. So whatever I do here, so say 2005, it's going to use that 2005 value in this function, right? So the birth year is this guy that I'm passing in. And then it's going to go up and this function is going to call and it's going to be like, okay, I know birth year is 2005. We sort of passed it down this chain and it's going to compute the age and give it back to us. So, you know, you can name these um, input parameters, whatever you want. Like, let me name this like year of birth or something to make this more, uh, a little more clear. And let's copy year of birth right there in those two spots as well. So I think this will make this a little bit more clear. Some of it might be confusing when you just see birth here over and over again, right guys? So in this function display age, we have another, we have an input parameter. It's the same exact type of setup. We just called it something different, right? We're saying year of birth. So in this case, we passed in 2005. So year of birth is 2005. And then we say let age equal get age. And this is asking us for a birth year up here. And we're passing in that guy, year of birth, which in this case is 2005. So that's going to go all the way down the chain to this get age guy. And it's going to say current year, which is 2023 minus birth year, which in this case is 2005. And then it's going to return our age for us. So that's super cool right there. It's a little bit more complex of an example to show you how powerful functions can be and how they can help us do things in a much more efficient way because we can reuse that stuff, right? Like I don't wanna have to type this code over and over again to perform the same task. I can use functions to make my code reusable and execute that stuff whenever I want and accomplish all of this stuff in one simple line of code when I call the function. So that's why functions are super helpful and super useful for us guys. We're gonna get a lot more practice once we do some more problems and build some applications. But this is going to wrap it up for our functions module for now. We're going to be moving on to the next section where we're going to be talking about something called optionals. So once again, you guys are killing it. Uh, keep sticking with the program here. We're almost done with the fundamentals. And then we're going to get into the app development fundamentals, which is going to be where all of this stuff is going to come to life. And you're really going to be happy that you spent the time working on the fundamentals. So the app development stuff is going to be super simple. Let's, get, let's go ahead and get started with our next module, guys.